This is a camera live stream from a Raspberry Pi. And what you're seeing is the output of a Raspberry Pi camera module. And to get started, all you need is a Raspberry Pi and a Pi camera module. In this video, we're gonna build our Raspberry Pi camera stream and we're taken from the very beginning. So if you have a Raspberry Pi hanging around, this can be an interesting start. Hi, my name is Evan and I make DIY projects on my YouTube channel, ranging from smart mirrors to electric skateboards to even smart CCTV cameras. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to create your own Raspberry Pi live stream and see the live footage on your client device, whether it's your tablet or your phone. And I'm here with me to provide a tutorial on how to create your own Raspberry Pi camera stream. So let's get to it. The overview. The part list. The first thing we'll need is a Raspberry Pi. We're using the Pi 4 in this case, and also a Pi camera module. We'll also need a micro SD card, a micro SD card adapter, a Pi 4 enclosure, a Raspberry Pi 4 charger, make sure it's USB-C, a micro HDMI cable, and since we're doing the desktop setup, we'll need a keyboard and a mouse. You can find the parts in the article below. We're gonna use the monitor for the display. And an ethernet cable is optional for a wired connection. This is where the Pi comes in. Now, essentially, a Raspberry Pi is a computer, but it's credit card sized. Because of its small form factor, low power consumption, and relatively low cost, this makes it ideal for DIY projects, like the Pi camera stream. You can see the USB peripheral ports on the side of the Pi. And if you flip it over, we have the micro SD slot to load in the operating system. Let's get to building. Assembly of parts, the camera build. Now in order to complete the setup, we'll need a Pi camera module and a Raspberry Pi. Now the Pi camera module comes with a ribbon cable. We're going to insert the ribbon cable inside the camera port of the Raspberry Pi by unhinging the latches of the camera port and inserting the cable inside. We can now finally press down on the latches to make sure the ribbon cable is secure. And this is the final build. We recommend putting inside the enclosure. This would give an extra layer of security and protection, as well as it's more easier to handle. Plus, the camera module has its own dedicated stand. This is the final version of the build. Now that we've put the Pi camera build together, the question is, how does it work? And what's the theory behind it? How it works, the theory. We're capturing live footage from the Raspberry Pi build as a video streaming server and using Flask to create a live stream to our client device with the Pi camera. And here's an example of the stream. Now Flask is a great web framework for this project because it's lightweight leading to low latency. Devices connected to the same network of the Pi would be able to visit the URL and see the live footage of the stream. whether it's a single device or multiple devices. And since it's displaying a web page, we're able to fully customize it, making it interactable. Well, that's enough theory. Let's get to setting up and etching the OS onto the SD card. We're now gonna etch the Pi OS. We're gonna do this by inserting the SD card into the adapter and plugging it into the USB port of the PC. And eventually it will load. Now heading off to the raspberrypi.org site, we're gonna click on downloads and download the latest Raspberry Pi OS. We're gonna download the zip. Now while we do that, we're gonna also download the Etcher software. And this is also available for Mac and Windows.
Now that they're both downloaded, we're gonna unzip the PyOS image file. And also install the Etra software. We can do this by dragging it into the applications for Mac. Now opening the Etra software, we're gonna locate our Raspberry Pi OS image file and select the target being our micro SD card being 32 gig and we're gonna flash. Now this process can take up to 15 minutes. Once that's completed, you may see a new drive by the name of boot. And once that's done, we've successfully etched the Pi OS onto the micro SD card. Now we're gonna unplug the USB and take the micro SD card of the freshly installed OS and plug it into the micro SD card slot of the Raspberry Pi 4. Now since we're using the desktop setup, we're going to use the mouse and keyboard as well as a monitor. Now we're going to use a micro HDMI cable to plug it into the micro HDMI port of the Raspberry Pi and the other end into our monitor. Hey you! Are you subscribed to Make Magazine yet? If you like this kind of video of projects and stuff to build, you are gonna love Make Magazine. It comes out quarterly and it is packed full of tips and tricks, full projects that you can recreate and feature pieces explaining how makers are changing the world for the better. You can find information on how to subscribe in a multitude of ways, digital or get the actual print edition in your mailbox at the link above, the link below in the description. Now back to the video. The keyboard and mouse can be plugged into the Raspberry Pi USB ports just like any other computer. And lastly, we're going to supply some power with the USB-C port. And you can see that the setup pretty much resembles a desktop PC. We're now going to turn on the Pi. Now if you stop here, you've pretty much completed the setup of a typical Raspberry Pi desktop, but we're gonna take it one step further and complete the setup of the Raspberry Pi camera stream. Now we've got the Pi up and running, we're gonna complete the setup wizard. We can do this by clicking next and selecting our country. We can also select our Wi-Fi network. In this example, I've already got it connected. We're going to skip on updating for later. Now we're going to open a terminal window and using sudo raspberry config, we're going to get into the settings and enable the camera port so we can use the Pi camera module. And the next part is we're going to enable VNC. Now taking the IP address of your Pi, you can now access the same Pi from the display of another PC without the need of a monitor. This will work out in the long run for this project as you won't need to hook up your PC every time you want to make a change to the Pi. Now that we've accessed the Pi over VNC, the first thing we're going to do is take a picture of the Pi to make sure the Pi camera module is working. Now that we've verified the camera module is working, we're now going to install the library dependencies and the git repo. Now this git repo allows you to create a live stream over Flask. There's more information on how it works in the article in the description below. We're now going to install the library dependencies. So we're going to open a new terminal window and copy and paste the commands. The very first two commands will update and upgrade our existing dependencies.
we're now going to install the rest of it. Now this process can vary depending on your Raspberry Pi build. You also might find some dependencies have already been installed. And it's also good practice to create your own local Python environment, but we'll leave this out for now. Now we're going to clone the Raspberry Pi camera stream. And as you can see in the Pi folder, it's empty. Now opening a new terminal, we're going to copy and paste the command. This will git clone the repo into our home directory. And as you can see, the Pi camera stream flask is available. Now going into it, you'll see a number of dependencies. The main one being camera.py, which would give us access to the Pi camera module, the main.py, and also the templates. And in the templates, we have the index.html, which loads the website. The main.py is what creates the Flask server. You can find more information on this in the article below. What we're going to do right now is run the main.py and you can see the output. Now going into our browser and typing in the URL of the Pi with colon port 5000 we're going to see the stream and here it is you can see the performance of the stream is quite good however the latency can vary depending on your internet connection and coverage and here are other objects we're just going to stop the pi stream and if you don't want to use the ide and rather use the terminal to access the Pi stream, we can do this by opening a terminal command and copy and pasting this specific command. The following command shows Python 3 and the file path to the main.py. And we can verify this by running the URL again. And as a bonus, if you would like to auto start your Pi stream as soon as it turns on without the need of a running a command, this next part addresses it. Now this is totally optional and there's different ways to do this but in this way we're going to go into the profile script and copy and paste the same python command and hit ctrl x and y to save the script. And this approach does give us a headless setup, which does improve the performance of the Pi stream. But as a result, we need to enable SSH on the Pi. This can be found in the interfacing options and SSH. Now that's done, we're going to reboot the Pi. And now we can access the Pi using the terminal from a different PC. And we can verify here that we've got access. And finally, to test that the Pi stream is working, we're gonna access this on a different device. And it looks good. And that's pretty much all. This here covers the basics, but you can take it one step further and build applications such as a portable body camera or even a smart CCTV camera with face recognition. Featuring the new Pi High quality camera. The real world applications is what makes this interesting. Thanks for watching this video and a big thank you to Make for the time. You can find all the details and the Git repo in the article below. Also, subscribe to Make for more content. And if you like my type of content, of DIY projects, you can find my channel in the links below as well. Thanks for watching. Peace.